And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hi there, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan with your Alaska Aviation Weather Outlook on this Sunday, August 4th, and this outlook will be for Monday and Tuesday. Of note, we've been talking about now uh, for a while the ridge of high pressure that is out over the Gulf, extending up into the eastern mainland over northwest Canada and over the Panhandle. This feature is providing uh, much warmer temperatures with VFR conditions and through the Panhandle, especially the eastern interior and some of that warmer air going all the way to the Arctic coast. Temperatures are going to be above 70 degrees uh, in areas like New Exit, Dead Horse. So very uh, warm system. Meanwhile, the west side of the state, that's where the active weather is. We have a low that is up in the northwest quadrant of the Bering Sea. That's going to be absorbed by another low pressure lifting northward from the North Pacific, crossing the Alaska Peninsula, Far Eastern Aleutians. This is going to pull another round of, of moderate to heavier rainfall along uh, Kodiak Island, especially the east side and the uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. That moisture is going to be pulled inland to back up through the southwest interior along the southwest and west coast eventually uh, tuesday and wednesday going all the way further north of the bering strait also that's going to spread rain up across the kenai peninsula with increasing rain around seward some of the rainfall heavy there through midweek so keep that in mind but in the meantime some of the best weather for the next few days early in the week will be over the panhandle and here through uh, the eastern interior another factor with these systems coming in we're going to have some stronger southerly gap winds through the Alaska Range, Brooks Range uh, today and into tomorrow. So watch for turbulence there. And uh, taking a look at uh, what's happening by Monday afternoon, we have still VFR conditions across much of the mainland interior, south central, southeast, very warm temperatures. Another thing to keep in mind Monday afternoon if you're flying out areas like Yukon Flats, uh, Eagle, Northway, where temperatures are going to get into the 80s, so high density altitude. You may want to allow extra runway if you have a heavier load. Keep that in mind as temperatures could reach mid, even some isolated upper 80 degree readings, and even some 80 degree readings in the panhandle on Monday afternoon, as this is a rather warm setup. To the west, IFR conditions, western Gulf around uh, east side of Kodiak Island, uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, where you have that uh, onshore flow, and then a band out there of IFR conditions from the Bering Strait all the way down through the eastern Bering Sea. And for Tuesday morning, we expect those IFR conditions to be creeping northward uh, up along the western Gulf into the Seward Peninsula, approaching uh, the west side there of uh, Prince William Sound, as well as trying to creep up along areas of the Alaska, lower Alaska Range, and then along the southwest coast all the way up to just off of Point Hope and off of the uh, northwest Arctic coast there uh, to the west and north of Utqiagvik. But again, warm southerly component of the flow is going to bring some very warm temperatures here through the north slope and Arctic coast, some areas getting above 70. And for Tuesday afternoon, there could be isolated thunderstorm pop-up, especially north side of the central Alaska range and up here central western part of the Brooks Range. Uh, keep in mind, there are going to be areas of precipitation being pulled through. Some rain, some of the rain still uh, locally heavier around the Seward Peninsula, down here along the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island up along the east side of the Kenai uh, Peninsula, and up into the western part of Prince William Sound, where we do find more extensive IFR conditions. So the past conditions to start out here Monday, Anatovic Pass in the uh, East Central Brooks Range VFR, as will Adigan Pass. Still could be some uh, gustier winds and turbulence there through uh, some of those gaps with those southerly winds. West Arm of the Alaska Range, you can see MVFR conditions as you get down toward Lake Clark and off to the south and west of there. Merrill Pass should generally stay VFR on Monday. And as we round across uh, the central and eastern Alaska Range, VFR conditions will prevail with warm temperatures. Rainy Pass, Windy Pass, Isabel and Mentasta Passes, all seeing VFR conditions and warm temperatures. And uh, as we go drop down across the Copper River Basin for Monday, Tanita Pass, VFR, places like Glen Allen can be around 80. Portage Pass, VFR conditions as well. And then as we go into the Panhandle, extensive VFR conditions expected there on Monday with the north end at Chilkoot and White Passes, VFR. So here, this tells the story just looking at the freezing levels aloft. 
you have this warm dome of air right over the eastern mainland, Alcan border, northwest Canada, Panhandle. That kind of shows you where that ridge axis is. So winds are light aloft around this as we have this big dome of warm temperatures, 70s and 80s, warmest readings, Yukon Flats, Upper Tanana Valley, uh, some mid and upper 80s with that here early in the week. That's also going to increase fire danger and as I mentioned, allow some extra runway for uh, taking off, especially if you have a heavier load with a high density altitude concerns there. Colder troughing over the Bering Sea, so we find the freezing levels aloft falling back down below six and 4,000 feet here across the western portion of the Bering. So the greatest threat for icing will be where we have uh, the areas of rain, thicker cloud cover, frontal systems. There could be some moderate icing there near the entrance of uh, Cook Inlet as well as the south end of uh, the Kenai Peninsula, including Homer. Back to the west, we are looking at some pockets and broader areas of uh, moderate icing potentially there along Norton Sound, especially the Seward Peninsula into Kotzebue Sound. But the freezing levels are high, so this would be above 12,000 feet uh, out there in the west coast areas. And looking at the jet stream pattern at 30,000 feet, the upper level flow, here's the bridge axis as I was just kind of showing you how that uh, the temperatures, the freezing levels aloft being higher align with that ridge axis. Back to the west though, we have broad trough over the bearing. We have a core of winds in upwards to 120 knots just to the west-southwest of the uh, central and western Aleutians. And then as it comes back up the southerly flow here, across uh, the southwest portion of the mainland as high as 95 knots, Alaska range back toward Bethel. And then another area of strong winds over the Chukchi Sea, eastern Russia in excess of 85 to 95 knots. At 700 millibars or 9,000 feet, we find a broad belt of winds, again, wrapping around this trough and coming up right across Kodiak Island, Cook Inlet, uh, back into the southwest interior, Alaska range could see winds, southerly winds 50 to 65 knots. And then as we bring it down to 3,000 feet, you see that uh, south, southeast to south flow coming in there from around uh, Cook Inlet across Lake Iliamna. So this is areas that could have some severe turbulence and, and then extending uh, northward where the winds fall off, but still holding up there around 35 knots. So this is the way turbulence looks on Monday. Generally speaking, broad area of moderate turbulence from the Brooks Range and say Point Hope, Cape Lisburn, all the way down across the Seward Peninsula, Western Interior, Southwest Interior, along the Alaska Range, into Cook Inlet and around Kodiak Island, generally surface to 4,000 feet, but some of the areas around here would be a little higher, uh, say surface to six, surface to 8,000 feet. And there could be some areas of isolated severe turbulence around uh, Kamishak Bay on over toward Lake Iliamna there in this lower uh, southwesterly arm of the Alaska Range.